religion is basically a function of man itself, right? Yeah. And that's the big component I think that almost he's missing on in some ways, but hitting on at the same time. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. Glad to have you with us for another reaction video from your favorite reaction channel with <laughs> Phil, Sam, and Bars and Barbells. And we're doing George Carlin again today. Mm -hmm. We've got a couple of videos up now. Actually, more than a couple. I think we have three that we've done. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've done a little bit of his, uh, his stuff from his early in his career. Yes. And now we're kind of progressively seemingly going to it later in his career. So today yeah. we're doing one that uh, is going to be a little bit interesting to see because um, it's called Religion is Bull. <laughs> and uh, you know, I think he's going to express some, some uh, opinions on religion as a whole and uh you're doing it we're doing it with two church goers here <laughs> yes so that should be should be interesting um you know we believe that everybody can have their own views and, yeah. and approach that subject the way they want to but it'll be interesting to see how we react to, to yeah. that aspect of, yeah, of george sure. and he's very uh, he's a smart intelligent guy very opinionated so yeah. it's gonna be gonna be interesting to see how it goes yeah. all right it's a little bit longer it's about 10 minutes so i don't think we should run through this uh intro any longer but uh, appreciate the love, it. as usual, guys, when you uh, you tune in and you like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff has helped the channel grow tremendously. Yes, so thank, thank you, you so for that. Much, guys. Yeah, and we encourage you to keep doing that because it really does make all the difference in the world. So with that said, you ready? Let's do it. All right, let's go. In the bullshit department, in the bullshit department, a businessman can't hold a candle to a clergyman because I got to tell you the truth folks I got to tell you the truth when it comes to bullshit big time major league bullshit you have to stand in awe in awe of the all-time champion of false promises and exaggerated claims religion no contests no contest religion Religion easily has the greatest bullshit story ever told. Think about it. Religion has actually convinced people that there's an invisible man <laughs> living in the sky who watches everything you do every minute of every day. And the invisible man has a special list of ten things he does not want you to do. And if you do any of these ten things, he has a special place full of fire and smoke and burning and torture and anguish where he will send you to live and suffer and burn and choke and scream and cry forever and ever till the end of time. But he loves you. He loves you. He loves you and he needs money. He always needs money. He's all powerful, all perfect, all knowing, and all wise. Somehow, just can't handle money. <laughs> Religion takes in billions of dollars. They pay no taxes, and they always need a little more. Now, you talk about a good bullshit story. <laughs> Holy shit. Thank you very much. But I want you to know, I want you to know something. This is sincere. I want you to know, when it comes to believing in God, I really tried. I really, really tried. I tried to believe that there is a God who created each of us in his own image and likeness, loves us very much, and keeps a close eye on things. I really tried to believe that, but I got to tell you, the longer you live, the more you look around, the more you realize something is fucked up. <laughs> Something is wrong here. War, disease, death, destruction, hunger, filth, poverty, torture, crime, corruption, and the ice capades. <laughs> Something is definitely wrong. This is not good work. If this is the best God can do, I am not impressed. Results like these do not belong on the resume of a supreme being. This is the kind of shit you'd expect from an office temp with a bad attitude. <laughs> and just between you and me, 
in between you and me, in any decently run universe, this guy would have been out on his all-powerful ass a long time ago. <laughs> and by the way, I say this guy because I firmly believe, looking at these results, that if there is a God, it has to be a man. No woman could or would ever fuck things up like this. So, so, if, if, if there is a God, if there is, I think most reasonable people might agree that he's at least incompetent and maybe, just maybe, doesn't give a shit. <laughs> and give a shit, which I admire in a person and which would explain a lot of these bad results. So rather than be just another mindless religious robot, mindlessly and, and aimlessly and blindly believing that all of this is in the hands of some spooky incompetent father figure who doesn't give a shit, I decided to look around for something else to worship. Something I could really count on. And immediately I thought of the sun. Happened like that. Overnight I became a sun worshiper. Well, not overnight, you can't see the sun at night. <laughs> but first thing the next morning, I became a sun worshiper. Several reasons. First of all, I can see the sun, okay? <laughs> yeah. Unlike some other gods I could mention, I can actually see the sun. I'm big on that. If I can see something, I don't know, kind of helps the credibility along, you know? So every day I can see the sun as it gives me everything I need. Heat, light, food, flowers in the park, reflections on the lake, and occasional skin cancer, but hey, <laughs> at least there are no crucifixions and we're not setting people on fire simply because they don't agree with us. Sun worship is fairly simple. There's no mystery, no miracles, no pageantry, no one asks for money, there are no songs to learn, and we don't have a special building where we all gather once a week to compare clothing. And the best thing, the best thing about the sun, it never tells me I'm unworthy. It doesn't tell me I'm a bad person who needs to be saved. Hadn't said an unkind word. Treats me fine. <laughs> so, I worship the sun. But, I don't pray to the sun. Know why? I wouldn't presume on our friendship. It's not polite. I've often thought people treat God rather rudely, don't you? Asking you know, trillions and trillions of prayers every day, asking and pleading and begging for favors, do this, give me that, I need a new car, I want a better job. And most of this praying takes place on Sunday, his day off. <laughs> it's not nice, and it's no way to treat a friend. But people do pray, and they pray for a lot of different things. You know, your sister needs an operation on her crotch. Your, your brother was arrested for defecating in a mall. But most of all, you'd really like to fuck that hot little redhead down at the convenience store. You know, the one with the eye patch and the club foot, huh? Can you pray for that? I think you'd have to. And I say, fine, pray for anything you want. Pray for anything. But what about the divine plan? Remember that? The divine plan. Long time ago, God made a divine plan. Gave it a lot of thought, decided it was a good plan, put it into practice. And for billions and billions of years, the divine plan has been doing just fine. Now you come along and pray for something. Well, suppose the thing you want isn't in God's divine plan. What do you want him to do? Change his plan? Just for you? Doesn't it seem a little arrogant? It's a divine plan. What's the use of being God if every rundown schmuck with a $2 prayer book can come along and fuck up your plan? <laughs> and here's something else, another problem you might have. Suppose your prayers aren't answered. What do you say? Well, it's God's will. Thy will be done. Fine. But if it's God's will and he's going to do what he wants to anyway, why the fuck bother praying in the first place? <laughs> Seems like a big waste of time to me. Couldn't you just skip the praying part and go right to his will? It's all very confusing. So to get around a lot of this, I decided to worship the sun. But, as I said, I don't pray to the sun. You know who I pray to? Joe Pesci. <laughs> Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci. Two reasons. First of all, I think he's a good actor, okay? To me, that kind of... It's, it's definitely interesting to look at this point of view mm -hmm. now. Um, it's funny because I feel like... Um, some of the bits that I had seen from George Carlin, I think maybe this might have been around the time period. 
I would have resonated a lot with what he was saying in terms of my personal opinions and beliefs on things. Yeah. Um, Because I never used to follow any kind of spirituality or anything like that, right? And that kind of shifted as time went by. But, like, it's funny seeing the audience being so vocal about it, too. And, like, it just seems like it's, you know, almost a sign of the times that, like, sometimes there are things that are just stronger in society. Yeah. the intellectual component of like oh like the way it's funny the way I look at this the way he's talking about it's clearly it's just a joke and it's a stand up and he's making you know um, his his opinion mixed in with kind of the comedic value right which is fine which is we've experienced that on multiple other comedians but I think that it's just it's just interesting when you look at the way he approaches it because he's a really smart guy and you can tell that he is, right? Yeah, for sure. But I think it's almost he takes that approach of being intellectually superior to the point of like how stupid it is to think of something, you know, that's greater than you aspect, yeah. right? And yeah. I, but I think he's focusing more on the dynamics of religion specifically and how like religion is basically a function of man itself, right? Yeah. And that's the big component I think that almost he's missing on in some ways but hitting on it at the same time yeah. in the in the routine that he's doing but if we're actually talking about this specific topic itself yeah. i think that's how you would look at it as like you know how funny is it that we think we're so intellectually superior to think that we're the kings of of earth and that there's nothing else that's beyond it right or like yeah. even even beyond earth right like the vastness of the universe and to think that there's nothing else out there that and, you know and now we hear yeah. about all this ufo nonsense oh, and everything else yeah, right it's but it's just funny like the time frame that we look at it as i think this is how like society just swings back and forth essentially of being yeah. like very spiritually inclined like you look in like maybe the 60s and the 70s and all that kind of stuff and then you know now to being less inclined and more recently and now i feel like we're having a little bit of a switch again in the world where some of these things are starting to shift again and also we just look at things from a western point of view right this is a very much a western point of view on things i feel like the way he's talking about religion is from more of a christian standpoint right not other world religions yeah so. so i think it's interesting because it stokes the conversation being that it's older Right. And I know like there's a lot of intellectuals that as they, you know, kind of go through the process all the time, like they go through, you know, no, I don't believe in anything. And then he said, like, he believes in the sun. And I know he's just kind of half joking with that. Yeah. But it's like all <laughs> we always come back to something and, like you, you believe in something, you yeah. know, it's like just something. It doesn't yeah. have to be a specific God. So. Yeah. I mean, obviously, there's atheists out there. But, yeah. um, you know, it's just interesting the the conversation that it, com- comedy always brings up in making you For think sure. about these things yeah. and you know I wouldn't say this may, this routine uh, doesn't make me uncomfortable in any way um, I, I guess I find it less funny though because there's a part of me being like meh like because I was in that mindset I look back on that like what he's saying I used to think the exact same yeah. way and I kind of just reflect on that rather than embracing the comedy routine as much so it makes yeah, me fair. enjoy the comedy less yeah. Just because I'm You're like, yeah, like, doing that comparison. Eh, it's like, you know, it's like, ah, oh, yeah, I've been there, done that. You know, yeah. it's like, anyways, Fair. I know this is a long rant, so. Second, he looks like a guy who can get things done. <laughs> Joe Pesci doesn't fuck around. <laughs> doesn't fuck around. In fact, in fact, Joe Pesci came through on a couple of things that God was having trouble with. For years, I asked God to do something about my noisy neighbor with the barking dog. Joe Pesci straightened that (laughs) cocksucker out with one visit. It's amazing what you can accomplish with a simple baseball bat. So I've been praying to Joe for about a year now. And I noticed something. I noticed that all the prayers I used to offer to God and all the prayers I now offer to Joe Pesci are being answered at about the same 50% rate. Half the time I get what I want, half the time I don't. Same as God. 50-50. 50-50. Same as the four-leaf clover in the horseshoe, the wishing well in the rabbit's foot. Same as the mojo man. Same as the voodoo lady who tells you your fortune by squeezing the goat's testicles. It's all the same. 50-50. So just pick your superstition, sit back, make a wish, and enjoy yourself. And for those of you who look to the Bible for moral uh, lessons and literary qualities, I might suggest a couple of other stories for you. Uh, you might want to look at the three little pigs. That's a good one has a nice happy ending i'm sure you'll like that then there's little red riding hood although it does have that x-rated part where the big bad wolf actually eats the grandmother which i didn't care for by the way and finally i've often always drawn a great deal of moral comfort from humpty dumpty 
The part I liked the best, all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. That's because there is no Humpty Dumpty and there is no God. None, not one, no God, never was. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it this way. If there is a God, if there is a God, may he strike this audience dead. <laughs> See, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Everybody's okay. All right. Tell you what. Tell you what. I'll raise the stakes. I'll raise the stakes a little bit. If there is a God, may he strike me dead. See, nothing happened. Oh, wait, got a little cramp in my leg. And my balls hurt. Plus, I'm blind. I'm blind. Oh, now I'm okay again. Must have been Joe Pesci, huh? God bless Joe Pesci. Thank you all very much. Joe bless you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I think the uh, the other thing that, about this one that I'm kind of feeling like I'm picking up is like his disdain is like very prevalent yeah. in what he's delivering yeah. and that he feels strongly about this subject, yeah. which I'm sure he feels strongly in, in, in his um, comedy and other respects as well and other um, bits that he does. Uh, but I just feel like it's like, it's like, I hate religion and you can tell, right? Yeah, and I, I would agree. And I think though, like the whole... You know, coming back to the concept, I guess the whole thing that we went through there, even at the end when he's saying like, you know, strike. It's making a joke, right? But strike the audience dead, kind of thing. Like that it, to me, it's just ir ironic and kind of interesting again because he's speaking from the com the the idea of a human being, right? Yeah. So it's like you're you, the whole thing that we went through there. It was like the problem with the existence or spirituality or faith or whatever is because this isn't happening or this isn't happening or because why this did happen or whatever. But it, the thing that I would point out or a lot of the time people overlook is that that has nothing, that's that's human beings making those decisions yeah. every single time. 100%. Right? And so like he, the, like the joke at the end there being like, if God is real, then you know strike everybody down here or strike me down. It's yeah. like you're just a human. Yeah. You're just like, a human why being. Why would it happen? Why would it all of a sudden it. just happen because you asked for it, right? And yeah. that's we come back to prayer and come back to all that stuff, right? So that's what I think is the component that is, you know, at that time that we discussed. But now coming back to we're more in the future, right? This is older. And now that we know that about so much of life existence elsewhere in the universe, for me anyways, my opinion is just that it's hard for me to derive the conclusion that we came from little single-celled organisms into this yeah. perfect system that we're in. That's my thing. Like I, you could say it was God. You could say it was aliens. You could say that um, you know it's another dimension. It's a universal energy. I don't know yeah. what it is. I, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't pretend to know. There was. You think there's something. I don't though, pretend to know. That's the difference, right? I don't pretend to know. Yeah. But this is a clear opinion based on you know what is factual and not, right? Basically. Yeah, for sure. So, the thing that I find really interesting is that I feel like in my experience that when people get older in age, which he is obviously in here, right? And I think that we've, we've at least in my observation, is that the earlier ones that we did of him being younger, his comedy bits were more based on um, less about opinion on, on life or world issues and more just on like general topics that like anybody could kind of relate to, like time and like the dirty words and yeah. stuff like that, right? Whereas like the, the most recent ones we've done has been climate and religion, right? Yeah. So those are two things that are very polarizing. Yeah. So I feel like when people get older, something happens in your life that will make you go like a fork in a road of one of two ways with polarizing issues, right? So it's like people will come to a point in their life where they'll either their life experiences and their, um, I guess, perception will either make them cling to religion harder because of the experiences that they've had, yeah. or it'll push them away, yeah. right? So obviously, like you said with him, it's very evident that it's pushed him away, yeah. right? But I feel like because he's at this older point in his life that now he has such a strong opinion on it based on looking back on the yeah, of those experiences. There are so. things in that I don't disagree with that as well. Like religion is itself, the institution itself has been one of the most corrupt and, yeah. and ridiculous uh, institutions in history of mankind. Right, but again, that's a man-made institution. Yeah, two separate right? things. The teachings of like Buddhism or whatever is completely, like you said, separate than that. But they all kind of relate into one thing. So one 
uh, you know, type of religion that is, again, derived from human beings that takes advantage of people uh, for money or, you know, in the case of the the church, you know, with all the pedophilia yeah, stuff like that came up. Yeah, taking advantage of your authority. Yeah, exactly. Like that's that's happens. indicative of stuff that I would totally say, you know, what puts, it, puts disdain towards mm -hmm. the religious aspect, right? Yeah. But again, that we forget that, you know, that's from human beings as like you said they get older or they go through different environments or whatever and they are then the ones that create these issues themselves so or yeah. you know find the other side of it which is you know like you said maybe get involved with a church from the age of five and end up doing that for the rest of their life because of the yeah. experiences or that there's they even had. people that have been in such hard places that they were actually brought into like a religious community and it completely saved them and changed their life right their experiences yeah. like yeah. you know i have a family member who went through a really really hard time became a member of a church now met the person that he's with completely changed his life and has devoted like a large part of his life to religion right, right? and it completely changed his life in a positive way in the second half of his life yeah. so anyway so we've been rambling for yes. a while now this turned into a uh, a real in-depth conversation yeah. and uh you know like i said in the beginning i don't care what people decide to do no, with their life their, your, their own right your decision is your own right um i just from a comedic standpoint i would say like it was harder for me to resonate like i said with this one than some of the other ones just because I would you know I guess it's like you any a topic though you could the more you can say it's true in your own personal opinion the more that you're gonna find it funny so that's it from us today guys and I uh, hope you enjoyed our little conversation there if you did you know what to do um, but with that said I hope you guys come back soon check out our other videos we have other comedy as well so it'll be much different than this one here but uh, lots of videos so uh, go check those out thanks for watching guys we'll see you in the next one